Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting this colorful Easter bunny and I'm posting it this week in hopes that you guys will have a little bit more time to paint it for Easter. Let's start with the outline. Before sketching this, I already tried out different poses for the bunny and this is my favorite one, but of course you can change it up if you would like. I started out by sketching really lightly and since the torso of the bunny is going to be the largest area, that's the first thing that I drew out and I just indicated it with an oval. Then I connected the head with another circle before adding on the features of the bunny. You can see how scratchy and light my lines are. That's because I was just trying to map out the main subject matter with the space that I have, making sure it's at the center and it's at a good scale. I also drew out the bouquet of tulips that the bunny is hugging and I simplified the shape of the flower by drawing out ovals so it's much easier to erase and reposition. Because this is an Easter bunny, I want to add different size and colored eggs. So I drew out a couple of smaller ones in front and a larger one at the back. And this is going to be surrounded by greeneries and also more flowers. If you like this painting but you don't want to paint it for Easter, you can also skip the eggs and just draw more flowers around the bunny. For the flowers that I'm going to feature, I'm going to keep them simple. I'm not even sure what these flowers are, but I just drew out really frilly petals with small leaves to decorate around the flower. And on the left here, I drew out larger leaves for a little bit of variation, and I'm going to add some berries growing out of the same stem. On the bottom right, I'm going to add some small flowers, but I just drew it out really loosely to indicate the spacing. Once I'm happy with how the flowers are surrounding and framing the bunny, I'm going to start by cleaning out the outline section by section. I do this by erasing small areas and relining it with cleaner singular or less scratchy lines. I also want to separate parts of the body a bit more since it was very much simplified before. So here I'm going to add the thigh area. This way it'll be much easier to paint around the features instead of the body just being a big blob. The other element that I want to clear out are definitely the eggs because these are going to be clean shapes later on as I paint, but I'm not going to clean out the vegetation around the bunny as much since I might even erase them before freehand painting them later on. By the way, I know this one might be a little bit more complex to sketch, so I will of course have the outline available in my coffee shop. The only flower that I'm going to clear out the outline are probably the tulips because I'm going to be painting them in more detail later on. To make it easier to draw the tulips and depict in the volume at the same time, it's actually by indicating the area of the opening. Instead of just making the opening at the top of every oval, try to bring it down a bit and this way it'll be much easier to figure out the placement of the flower petals surrounding that opening which enclosed the bulb in the middle. Next, let's go over the many colors. This is Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Cobalt Green by Holbein, Jean Brilliant by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Gray of Grey by Holbein, Ultramarine Finest by Schmincke, New Gamboche by Daniel Smith, and Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. I'll also be adding some details and outlines using my colored pencil. This is by Faber-Castell and it's just a hobby grade. It doesn't have specific names for the colors, but here are the numbers in case you have the exact same set. For the eyes of the bunny, you can either paint it or as for me, I find it much easier to just use a drawing pen. And this is by Snowman in the size 0.1 and the color is just black. Now let's start painting the tulips. I want these to be pink and the first color that I'm mixing is Quinn Red with Jean Brilliant. At the beginning, I wasn't exactly sure of the approach I wanted to take to paint these tulips. So after painting a couple, I decided to add more Quinn Red and Burnt Umber to create this warm muted red. And I'm going to place it at the center of all the tulips and this is to help indicate the center much clearer so I know where to paint the petals surrounding it. 
Once I'm done, I'm going to use the first mixture to paint the base color, which is from Jean Brilliant and Quinn Red. And at the bottom, I added more Jean Brilliant while the surface is still damp. I'm going to repeat the steps again. This time, you can see it a bit clearer. I place the pink mixture at the top first, then I pull it downwards so the top is a little bit darker than the bottom. And this is something that you can layer along the way while the surface is still damp. I like to add a slightly thicker consistency on top and I'm doing them in batches so the paint has a little bit of time to settle before adding the Jean Brilliant at the bottom of the tulips. Once I've covered the base color, I'm going to move on to the first tulip as this should be more or less dry. And I'm going to use the same pink mixture on my palette in a slightly thicker consistency. And I'm going to paint in between the petals while also creating streaky lines in between which are a little bit shorter and finer for subtle textures. You can also do this with a size 0 brush if it's a little bit easier to control. But here I'm still using my filbert brush which I've rotated sideways so the angle of the brush follows the curve of those lines. Here I also want to clear out the space in between some of the petal opening closer to the top of each flower. So I just use the same red and pull the paint downwards. Then I also added a little bit of shadow using the same pink mix in a slightly thicker consistency for the flowers placed behind the ones in front. Now moving on to the berries, I'm just going to use a thin to medium consistency of Jean Brilliant to paint the base color. I want to make sure that the base isn't puddling wet so I can continue it down while the surface is still damp with a bit of the pink mixture from earlier with added Quin Red in the ratio. Apologies for being off frame, but here I just erased the messy pencil marks that I had off the tiny flowers. So I can freehand paint these tiny blue flowers, and as for the color, I used a mix of Grey of Grey and Ultramarine Finest. For these tiny flowers, I'm just going to paint simple 5 petaled flowers while leaving the center empty so the petals doesn't bunch up together. This is also because I want to introduce another color at the center, so make sure to leave it white. Once I'm done and the paint has settled, I'm going to add a thick consistency of New Gamboge at the center. The berries should be completely dry by now, so I'm going to layer on a little bit of New Gamboge at the bottom and on top I'm going to add more Quin Red. Then I'm going to blend the center with a clean damp brush. Next I want the flower to be a neutral color, so I'm using a mix of Grey of Grey with a bit of Burnt Umber and a touch of New Gamboge in a thin consistency. This came to a creamy color that is similar to Buff Titanium, so you can also use Buff Titanium for this if you would like. To separate the back petals and the four shortened petals in front, I'm going to use a medium consistency of New Gamboge, which I'm going to place at the center of the flower. Then I'm just going to soften it using a clean damp brush. After that, I'm also going to use a thin consistency of the pink tulip color for the edges of these flowers. Then once the surface is completely dry, I'm going to add a thicker consistency for the center that's a little bit more textured. And to do this, I'm using almost a dry brush load. Moving on to the larger leaves, I used a mix of New Gamboge and Ultramarine Finest. And you can play around with the ratio depending on the tone of green that you're going for. If you notice on my palette, I like to keep the blue and the yellow separate. This way I can play around with the ratio as I go. While I still have this green on hand, I'm also going to paint the leaves for the tulips. Since the leaf has a fold, I want to separate the back side of this leaf, so I use a different color variation by adding more Ultramarine Finest in the mix. As for the stems, I want it to be more yellow green, so this has more New Gamboge in the ratio. As I'm painting the stems, I want to make sure I understand the connection between the flowers and the stem to make the composition more believable. Then in between the stems, I'm going to add a darker green. This has more ultramarine fineness in the ratio with a little bit of burnt umber. 
Here I'm also trying to build shadows around the stem, but the paint ended up just mixing with each other so I'm just going to leave them to dry and move on to paint the eggs. I want this first egg to have a muted light blue color, so I used buff titanium in a light to medium consistency as an underpainting. As for the blue, I used a mix of cobalt green with a bit of ultramarine finest. I first use a medium consistency at the bottom, then as I get towards the top, I soften it using a clean damp brush so the bottom looks like it's darker since it's hidden behind the egg in front. Now for the second egg, I'm going to go straight in with cobalt green starting from the left side, then I used a clean damp brush to pull the rest of the paint and color the rest of the egg while leaving the bottom empty because I'm going to paint some greeneries over it later on. As for the one in front here, I'm just going to keep it simple with a medium consistency of buff titanium and as for this large one, I'm going to color it in with a mix of buff titanium with a little bit of new gamboge so the color is a little bit more muted and I made the large one yellow because I feel like this yellow will bring a pop of color to the composition. Next I'm going to be painting the face for the bunny, so I'm just going to dampen the surface while avoiding painting on the eyes and inside of the ears for now. I want this to be evenly dampened without it puddling wet. Then I'm going to use a mix of burnt umber, twin red and new gamboge to create this very vibrant orangey brown. I'm going to place it around the nostrils while leaving a bit of space in between since the paint will spread naturally. If the surface is drying up, you can of course help it travel a little bit with your brush as well. I also want to apply a slightly thicker consistency under the cheeks, then softening it around the center so it looks more plump. As for the ears, I'm just going to use a light to medium consistency of the same color and I'm just going to more or less evenly distribute the color. I'm going to slowly layer on more color. The surface, as you can see, is still a little bit damp and I'm just going to slowly build it up until I'm happy with the vibrancy. And around the nose as well as the cheeks, I added a pink from Queen Red and Jean Brilliant. And I also placed this while the surface is still damp so it looks nice and fluffy. Next, I'm going to move on to the arms and I'm going to treat it the same way as before by dampening the surface and then applying the brown mixture from earlier. This is from Burnt Umber with Quin Red and New Gamboge. I'm placing the color first at the tips of the fingers and then pulling the rest of the paint outward towards the rest of the arm. I also want the value to be slightly darker at the bottom for a bit of shadow. So I'm just going to keep painting the rest of the body of the bunny, moving on to the tummy and the thigh area. I'm applying this using the same method, but this time I am using a slightly thicker consistency for a slightly darker value to make the tummy look like it's positioned further back. Before painting on the thighs, I'm going to move on to the feet first. I began by wetting the surface just like before. Then for the thicker consistency of the brown, I place it as a curve or an arch shape at the top as well as at the bottom before blending the color softly around it. And the area of the arch is basically where the paws are hiding behind the fluffy feet. Here I decided to increase the value of the tummy area to separate the area further so it looks like the bunny is sitting down. For the thigh, I'm just starting with a very thin consistency and slowly building it up. And here I'm adding some lines as folds of extra skin which will make the bunny look even more fluffy. Now that I've painted the base color, I'm just going to enhance certain features of the bunny by layering little by little. I don't want to overwork this area and whenever I add paint, sometimes I like to dampen the surface before applying the paint so it doesn't lose the fluffy texture. I realize I haven't painted the inside of the ears, which I'm going to use the same brown for the edges. And for the inside, I use the pink mixture from Jean Brilliant and Quinn Red. I'm going to leave the bunny to dry for now and move on to the foreground. In front of the eggs, I just painted some yellow ovals using a thick consistency of new gamboge as berries. Then while I wait for that to dry, I'm going to paint on the sepals as well as the stems of the flowers. 
I'm also going to paint the small leaves around the flowers using the same green and this has a lot of new gamboge in the ratio. I'm going to pair this up with some leaves with different shapes and color. The color here has more ultramarine fineness and burnt umber for a darker value. I'm also going to add some larger ones behind the flowers to make the composition look more dense. Using the same color still, I'm also going to paint the leaves off the berries. Next, I'm going to move on to the foreground. Here, I added more new gamboge and a bit more burnt umber to paint the leaves behind these blue flowers. And I'm being very careful to paint in between these flowers. It's okay to leave out some white negative space if you're unsure it's better than going over the flowers and ruining the shape of the petals. As the edges, I tried to make some small leafy textures. Then I'm also going to go back in with a darker value from a thicker consistency for a bit of shadow behind the flowers. I'm also going to do the same here for the greeneries around the berries and add more leaf or grassy texture behind these eggs so it looks like these eggs are sitting on a soft surface. You can of course freehand more leaves around the bunny as well so it frames and decorates the bunny nicely. Next, I'm going to refine the colors of the eggs. Here, I'm just using straight up new gamboge at the bottom up, and I'm going to stop applying the paint around here. And while the surface is still a bit damp, I use a slightly thicker consistency at the bottom for more shadows. I'm going to apply more or less the same thing to the rest of the eggs, but using the same color as the base. Once the eggs have volume, I'm going to start adding on the dots or the specks. For this, I used a mix of ultramarine finest with burnt umber to create this grayish tone. And I started out by using a light to medium consistency to place it randomly around all of the eggs. So I like to make some of the spacings a little bit closer than others. I don't want the specks to be evenly distributed. And I also want to play around with the size. At some point, I felt like my filbert brush was giving too much of a softer edge around my specs, so I switched to my round brush. And once I have a pretty good distribution, I'm going to go back in using a thicker consistency of the same mix. Notice how some of the dots are very small here. This is because I use a really dry brush load, so I can form a really sharp tip without the paint traveling too fast out of my bristles. Here I felt like the dots were a bit too even, so I decided to just use a clean damp brush to enlarge some of those specks. And then I'm going to go back in with a slightly thicker consistency to redefine those specks. This part is actually really fun and relaxing to paint, so I'm just going to keep adding on the specks for the rest of the eggs. At the moment, the bunny looks kind of evil, so I'm going to start working on the eyes here. I'm just using my pen to outline the shape first, making sure that it's even all throughout and it's balanced on the left and the right. Then I'm going to fill it in by just using this pen again. But before doing that, I also added small circles for the highlights. The eyes look kind of small at the moment. This is because I'm going to extend the size of the eyes with a thick consistency of the brown that I already have on my palette. And this will just add 
more translucency to the eyes. Then after that, I'm going to start building on the colors around the face again. After adding on the darker value for the face, of course, I'm going to balance everything out, which means I'm also going to add the darker values for the rest of the body as well. You might notice that the brown that I'm applying at the moment is a bit more cold and muted. This is because it has a bit of ultramarine fineness in the mix. And I'm just going to apply this brown variation lightly around some areas to deepen the shadows. Now that the bunny is a bit more defined, I'm going to balance out the details of these tulips. So with the pink that I still have on my palette, I just use a very thin consistency to add more of the streaky texture on the petals. I'm also going to deepen the space inside of the tulips. And here I basically used the brown mixture from earlier. This has burnt umber, quin red, and a little bit of ultramarine fineness to darken it further. And I just place it while also extending some of the lines very thinly to some of the opening of the petals. To give more volume to the bunny, I ended up glazing over a really thin consistency of a grey mix from Ultramarine Finest and Burnt Umber. And this is just lightly painted to separate each feature. And before adding some of the details as well as the outlines, I'm going to erase any extra pencil marks that I can find. I feel like the nose needs a bit more definition, so I ended up using the same color as the dark brown from the tulips to realign it. Then here, I'm going to start adding on the texture using my colored pencil. I'm using this mid-tone brown to draw on the fur according to the curvature of each feature, especially around the face. And I'm also going to do this for the rest of the body as well. For some lightly painted areas though, I only draw out the fur lightly, if anything at all, because I find that adding too much smaller details might make the whole composition look overworked. So please be mindful of that and only place the fur texture for the darker areas. As for the feet, I wasn't sure where the fur is facing and I still want to make this look fluffy so I ended up just twirling my pencil. So that's it for the bunny. Next, I'm going to outline some of the features to define them. And this doesn't have to be every single area. I just want to do this to any parts that I feel needs extra definition. As for the color of this pencil, it's similar to a sepia or a really dark muted brown. If you don't have access to colored pencil, you can also use ink pen in sepia or even black. I know that black might be a bit harsh, so if you were to use black, I would suggest for you to dash some of the outlines so it doesn't stand out too much unless that's the look that you're going for. So here I'm just going to keep outlining and I'll get back to you once I'm ready to move on to the next and final step. For some of the berries to give it a bit more volume, it actually helps to draw out the ends of the berries. So I'm just going to draw some little dots and I'm also going to play around with their position. Next, I'm going to be using Bleed Proof White to add some fine details like the whiskers. To paint on the whiskers, I used a really dry brush load so those lines can be nice and thin. 
Then for the light highlights, I use the thin consistency of bleed proof white and place it at the bottom of the eyes. As for the highlights of the berries as well as the pollen of the flowers, I use a thick consistency. I also feel like the blue flowers need some definition, so I'm going over or outlining some of the flowers using a medium consistency ultramarine finest. And at the center of the flowers, I also dotted in a mixture of quin red and burnt umber. Lastly, to bring the whole painting together, I feel like I need to fill up some of the white space, especially the areas closer to the bunny. So I just use whatever green I still have on my palette in a light or a really thin consistency to fill in those spaces. And that's basically all for this painting. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more, please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on the bell icon so you get notified of new videos coming every Friday. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!